Hi folks, this is Shafiq. Today we are going to focus on El Gamal encryption algorithm and how it's partially homomorphic with respect to the multiplication by its default configuration or partially homomorphic with respect to the addition with its modified version. But before we begin, please like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to stay up to date with the latest videos. Your comments are also more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. In El Gamal encryption algorithm, we first need to pick a prime number, let's say 2083. Thereafter, I'm going to check the primes of that number. That's why I'm going to create a function, it's prime, and this is going to get a number as input. Thereafter, I'm going to build a for loop for i in range from 2 to n. And this for loop is going to iterate. 4, 2, 2, and minus 1. Thereafter, I'm going to check the number n can be divisible by i without remainder. If this condition is satisfied, thereafter, this is not a prime number, that's why I'm going to return false this line. Otherwise, this function is going to return true. When I pick the prime number, this must be prime, I'm going to check the primeness of that number. After the prime number selection, we are going to pick a generator G at let's say 7. Once generator is defined, we are going to decide our private cake. And let's say it's going to be 17. X is my private cake. Thereafter, I'm going to calculate my public key Y. This is going to be G to do per root X in modulus p this is going to be the public key let's see x and y pair here my private key was 17 and my public key is going to be 739 besides the both generator g and modulus p they are going to be our public key as well to sum up uh, i'm going to print my private and public case private key is going to be x thereafter public a is going to be p then g and finally y once our private and public case are ready we are ready to encrypt messages i'm going to create a encrypt function here and this is going to get input message n and also random number r in encryption process someone is going to use my public key to encrypt a message thereafter i'm going to use my private key to decrypt a message and finally in encryption a tuple is going to be created the first one is going to be power and g to the power of random number r for modulus p this is the first item and secondly we are going to create c2 and this is going to be message times y to the power of r modulus p and this multiplication should be in mod p2 and this is going to return c1 and c2 pair and i'm also going to create a decrypt function here and we are going to pass c1 c2 pair as input to that function decryption process requires to calculate c2 times c1 to the power of minus x in modulus p and this multiplication should be in modulus p2 now we are ready to encrypt and decrypt messages and let's say my message is 100 and let's create a random number for encryption because as you can remember encryption function expects a random number that's why i'm going to import a random module in python and here i'm going to call random dot random integer between one and p minus one and let's see this pair 
I'm going to encrypt message 100 and this is going to be my random number. Now we are able to call this encrypt function and pass message and random number and this is going to return c1 c2 pair. Let's see c1 c2 pair. This is my encrypted text with a Gamal encryption algorithm. Thereafter we are able to decrypt this ciphertext pair to restore the message 100. As you can see, we are able to encrypt and decrypt messages with El Gamal algorithm with Python programming language easily. Let's focus on how encryption and decryption are working in El Gamal encryption algorithm. In decryption, we found the value of C2 times C1 to the power of minus X in modulus P. Let's put the values of c1 and c2 from the previous explanations c2 was m times y to the power of r whereas c1 was g to the power of r in decryption we found to c1 to the power of minus x that's why we restore here g to the power of r to the power of minus x Thereafter, let's restore the y value itself from this definition g to the power of x to the power of r. As you can see, this part is g to the power of x to the power of r and this part is g to the power of r to the power of minus x. Multiplication of these two terms is going to be 1. That's why we are able to restore the message m with a Gamal encryption schema. A Gamal encryption algorithm is homomorphic with respect to the multiplication by default. Let's show this from the encryption statements. If I encrypt the message 1 and 1 with a random 1k, thereafter I'm going to have c1, c2 pair as g to the power of r1 modulus p and message 1 times d to the power of r1 mod p. Here d is my public k. Similarly if I encrypt message m2 with random k r2 I'm going to have this c1 and c2 pair and let's calculate encrypted m1 and encrypted m2 values. I'm going to calculate the multiplication of both c1 and c2 values and c1 is going to be g to the power of r1 times g to the power of r2 and c2 is going to be message 1 times message 2 times d to the power of random k1 times d to the power of random k2. In both c1 and c2 we have common basis. Here g bases are common so we are able to put those two terms in same base then it becomes g to the power of random k1 plus random k2. Similarly in c2 I'm going to have the common basis and I can represent this value as d to the power of random k1 plus random k2. On the other hand if I encrypt the message 1 times message 2 with this uh, random k random k1 plus random k2 I'm going to have same value so encrypted message 1 times encrypted message 2 with random k1 and random k2 is going to be same with the encrypted value of message 1 times message 2 with random k1 plus random k2 random k so this schema shows El Gamal is a homomorphic encryption algorithm with respect to the multiplication. Suppose that first message is 9 and second message is 11. I'm going to create random case for each encryption for message 1 and message 2. And finally I'm going to call encrypt function here and pass message 1 and random k1 here but I'm going to assign this to n1 encrypted similarly I'm going to calculate encrypted value with encrypting message 2 and random k2 thereafter we know that encrypt function returns a top of c1 c2 and the both m1 encrypted and m2 encrypted values they have c1 and c2 values that's why I'm going to multiply c1 values of both m1 and m2 encrypted values and thereafter I'm going to calculate the c2 values but those multiplications are going to be handled in modulus p on the other hand if I encrypt 
the multiplication of plain message one and plain message two with the addition of those random case i'm going to have same value as you can see so if i store this in h1 variable and if i store this in h2 variable we are expecting that h1 is equal to h2 this shows the logamal encryption algorithm as homomorphic with respect to the multiplication operation. We can make a small modification on the standard logamal encryption algorithm and it becomes homomorphic with respect to the addition operation. Remember the standard algamal encryption calculations here. I'm going to modify the C2 terms here. Instead of multiplying the message values here, I'm going to calculate the G to the power of message instead of plain message. And this is going to be my uh, modified algamal encryption schema. If I multiply those modified functions uh, and I'm going to multiply them, as you can see in C2 term, I'm going to have g to the power of message 1 times g to the power of message 2. And they are sharing the same basis. That's why we can represent this value as g to the power of message 1 plus message 2. On the other hand, if I calculate the encrypted value of message 1 plus message 2, I'm going to have the same value as well. That's why this modification makes Algamal encryption algorithm homomorphic with respect to the addition. This operation, the sigma is also called exponential algamal. Let's implement the additive homomorphic version of Algamal encryption algorithm in Python programming language. That's why I'm going to modify the encrypt function here and as an option argument, we are going to do add an exponential argument here and its default value is going to be false. If this is true, we are going to calculate C2 differently instead of message itself. We are going to calculate the g to the power of message itself in modulus p. Do after I'm going to copy this block here and the encryption function called. I'm going to set the exponential argument here true then h1 is going to be message 1 plus message 2 instead of message 1 times message 2 and remember that we are going to use exponential argument here and h2 is going to be same here and let's see h1 and h2 content As you can see, they are same. This shows exponential algamal as homomorphic with respect to the addition. Here, the H2 calculation might be confusing. Here, we are not using addition. We are still using multiplication. It's because we multiply the modified encrypted values. That's the reason we use multiplication operation here. So, in this video, we shown that algamal encryption algorithm is homomorphic with respect to the either multiplication or addition. We also focus on the math behind those algorithm and how it becomes homomorphic. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.